Look at this AI powered NPC I made. Hi there. How's your climb going? You can chat with her and she'll respond based on your input. It's going well, thanks. I just took a break to admire the view. Have you seen any interesting routes up ahead? It can even affect the in-game environment, like giving me items or climbing around. While climbing, you found a journal. Oh, a journal. That's interesting. Maybe it belongs to someone who climbed here before us. Hi, I'm Alex. And today, I'm going to be showing you how I use VoiceFlow to deeply embed AI into my Unity game project to make an AI NPC, but also more broadly, the similar kinds of strategies you can use to embed AI deeply into your products using VoiceFlow and its advantages. And all of this is built on top of VoiceFlow, which is a platform that's really just designed to help you make the best AI agents you can, be that NPCs in video games or even just really great support agents. So in the proof of concept I'm showing today built in Unity, I'm not just linking up ChatGPT to my NPC and calling it a day. I'm actually using VoiceFlow to build my own custom agent that drives the NPC with its own hard coded in logic and its ability to interact with the environment in the game by changing backgrounds, dealing with items, and things like that, which more deeply embed AI into the experience. More generally though, you can think about how you might use a similar kind of framework in your own application, like an AI powered shopping suggestion app, for example. Okay, so let's go through a full demo of what this project can actually do. So first of all, obviously when it talks, Hi there. It synthesizes voice using Eleven Labs, and it's able to have a back and forth discussion with us. So it's playing the character of Madeline, a mountain climber. Um, and How's your climb going? And we can have a conversation about them. Based on the actual text of the conversation and some context, it'll pick a face to display. Then we can answer back through this text box. So my climb's going great. I saw a butterfly. And then it's using an LLM to synthesize a response back to this. So it's back and forth. So this first answer was hard coded, but now it's going to go a little bit, answer however it wants. That's awesome. So it's able to answer. Did you mean a butterfly? Whoops, I think I spelled it wrong, but it's able to answer contextually. I saw a few near the waterfall earlier. And it has an idea of the lore, so. Yes, a butterfly. It was so beautiful with vibrant colors. Speaking of waterfalls, have you ever climbed near one before? You climb from dark temple to deep jungle. So now we also see we have a narrative voice in there. So it's able to change up the voice that's going on. And then it's able to actually trigger an action. So here's talking about us from climbing from a dark temple to a deep jungle. And then here we change backgrounds. Now we are in the deep jungle. Another character actually has contextual awareness of where we are. So if I ask Madeline, where are we right now? It's going to be able to answer based off this context. The AI is also going to be deciding lots of other things in the game, like, for example, giving us items, which I built in by just a collection of items they can While have. While climbing, you found a strawberry. So boom, here we found a strawberry. So the AI decided that for some reason it wanted to give us a strawberry. We get we get that in our inventory. Oh, a strawberry. Comments That's about a the strawberry. That's a rare find up here. Mind if I have a taste? So what other surprises has this mountain got in store for us? We're able to give it the strawberry and have it react to that. Thank you, this is delicious. So now she's reacting to the strawberry we just gave her. Have you tried climbing in the deep jungle before? And again, she's bringing up the environment we're in, which shows her contextual awareness, other than just a basic chat GPT that would have no idea what's going on. It's quite an adventure, right? Now we can also ask it to do certain things. So here we're gonna ask it to read from a journal to give us some lore about the mountain and where we are. So here we're gonna be using some lore we already fed into it as well as some intent triggering to figure out what we want to do. So can you read from your journal and tell me what's special? So asking her that sort of long question and it's gonna to go to her journal and she's gonna be writing an answer based off the lore that we've already fed it. Madeline cracks open a journal and reads from it. So here it's doing its own special action for reading a journal. Hence the special narrator text, and now it's going to read from the journal. Sure, let me read a bit from my journal. Nestled within Celeste Mountain's lower slopes, the lush temple is a sanctuary of tranquility and natural beauty. It's enveloped in vibrant flora and shimmering water, where the line between the natural and spiritual blurs. And she'll go on and on, and you can imagine how this would work. But overall, here we're using a bunch of different features of the AI, from voice synthesis to being able to trigger events, 
intent classification and using the knowledge base to feed lore to actually make a really immersive AI agent. And we can imagine that in a real game, it wouldn't just be this chat box. You would be doing whatever the game is about. And then you could turn to your NPC and have a conversation that's more contextual, aware, and organic than pre-scripted scenes could possibly be. So yeah, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we're not just strapping on ChatGPT to our NPC in the video game and calling it a day there. Through VoiceFlow, we're able to make a much more custom and catered experience where the agent is able to interact with the environment. So some of the reasons it's really advantageous to build these kinds of agents on VoiceFlow are that first of all, the visual canvas makes it easy for me to change the conversation, the direction of how things are going, and to customize my agent along the way. There's also the great knowledge base system, which is pretty much a vector database already ready for us, that I can use here to populate my agent with lore from the video game, for example. Uh, we have an example here where when reading a journal, the AI can take from the lore that we're encoding through this knowledge base to supplement its answers and be more creative, which might be more difficult to do if you're using a more classical AI framework. And speaking of AI, there's already a ton of great LLM providers built into VoiceFlow itself. So here we're able to do our prompt engineering and connect it here straight to GPT-4.0, the system prompt and everything. So we don't need to build all these wrappers calling external LLM APIs ourselves. Voice also supports a great community of functions. So here we're doing the voice synthesis using 11 labs. And if I look into this component here, we're actually using a template function for the 11 labs with all the code already written for it, which made it really easy for me to do this voice synthesis. And Voistel has a great community and marketplace full of these kinds of example functions you might want to use in your own products. And then overall, Voistel just supplies you with all the tooling you need to build your great agents. Things like intent classification, figuring out if a user wants to do something, entity extraction, like extracting a certain part of their phrase that's important to feed to your AI or things like that. We build all the tooling around you, helping you make your great agent as easily as possible. And we're always adding more great agent building features. So this is a pretty crazy proof of concept. And obviously there's a couple of limitations right now. Things like delay in the conversation or scalability and cost. Right now it's taking a lot of time to call other external servers, voice synthesis, all the AI tokens being used for this complicated process are a little bit expensive. But this kind of project can give us a glimpse at what's coming in the future as LLMs improve, text-to-speech and speech-to-text get much better, and these models become more lightweight and are able to be run on our machines locally. But you can only let your mind imagine what's possible. You can have more creative endings to video games, more immersive NPCs, environments that react more organically to what you're doing. Really, the sky's the limit. So I hope you found this overview of the AI NPC project interesting and learned a little bit more about why it's great to be building agents with VoiceFlow. I've actually made a full walkthrough of how I made this agent, going into all the nitty gritty, the details, implementation logic and decisions I made. And there's a link for that in the video description below. And if you're interested in learning more about building great AI agents, everything from applied research, practical tutorials, tips and tricks, and more, make sure to subscribe to the VoiceFlow YouTube channel. I'll see you around. And here's a little bonus content of that NPC in action. We made it. The end was definitely brutal with those icy patches. But look at this view. Totally worth it, right? Let's take a moment to rest and soak it all in. Absolutely worth it. The sense of accomplishment up here is incredible. But you know what? I've been thinking, what if we venture into the deep jungle next? I've heard rumors of hidden waterfalls and exotic wildlife. It would be a whole new challenge, don't you think? You climb from the summit to deep jungle. 